Greetings YouTubers, I'm Rick, the tech enthusiast here, with the next Elegoo lesson number 8, Tilt Ball Switch. In this lesson, we'll become familiar with the tilt sensor and how we can use it in Arduino projects. We'll build and configure a simple circuit to demonstrate the functionality, and then we'll build a magic 8-ball. So let's start building. First, let's start out with a brief overview of the tilt sensor or the tilt ball switch. The tilt sensor can be used to detect orientation or inclination, and it can even be used as a crude vibration or motion detector. They're inexpensive and simple. Looking at the data sheet, the device in our kit consists of a gold-plated copper cylindrical housing with uh, one or two leads coming out of it. Uh, and no, I don't, you know, I don't think this, uh, Data sheet corresponds to what we have. Nope, I don't think so. Hopefully it's close to the same rating as this one. Well, anyhow, ours has uh, two leads and they look like they're gold plated with uh, either one or two conductive balls inside. Uh, other tilt sensors may have different shapes, use different materials, multiple electrodes or a single electrode, or use even mercury inside. But since ours has a rolling ball, if I shake it, sounds like two, it's referred to as a tilt ball switch. The ball rolls and makes an electrical connection between the housing and the electrode. The tutorial has more information on the tilt sensor, so I encourage you to check it out. For this lesson, we'll need the following items from your kit. The Elegoo Arduino Uno R3 board, the tilt ball switch, two female to male jumper wires, and that's it. On page 73, you'll see the following schematic. Super simple. On page 74, you'll see the wiring diagram. I should point out we're not going to use a breadboard. We're simply going to connect the female ends of the jumper wires to the tilt ball sensor and the male ends to the Arduino board. Okay, let's jump to the code. As before, we'll load the recommended sketch provided in the tutorial. Go to the file menu item, open, and browse to where you save the Elegoo files. Then under your language, code, under lesson 8 ball switch, ball switch, and open the ball switch.ino file. Looking at the code, you can see that there is a constant integer LED pin equals 13. Under the void setup, there's a couple of pin mode functions to set the LED pin to output and a hard code pin 2 to input. Next, a digital write for pin 2 to set it to high. In the void loop, there's a digital read to the local variable digital value. Then it checks to see if the value is high. If it is, then it turns off the LED or it turns on the LED. Hmm. So looking at this code, I'm pretty sure it will work, but this time let's update the code before we begin. First, the onboard LED is already predefined in the Arduino IDE, so let's correct that. I'll add a comment saying, we're using a predefined LED built-in equaling 13 to help us remember. Under this constant, we'll change the variable name to tilt sensor pin and set that to equal two. And now let's modify the comment here. Oh, let's say the file as my ball underscore switch. Okay, under the void setup, we'll just replace the variable with the LED underscore built-in. And the hard-coded pin becomes tilt sensor pin. I'll just copy and paste it. Now the next line does a digital write to set the pin high, but instead of doing that, 
we can add the underscore pull up to enable the pull up resistors and include a little comment here. Set the tilt switch input and set to high using pull up resistors. Now the next line can be deleted. Good. Under the void loop, we have the local variable digital value. Oh, uh, but first let's change the hard coded pin. I'll copy tilt sensor pin from here and paste it here. Okay, the resulting digital read is either high or low. This returns a uh, high or low. Because of that, the if statement can be simplified. We don't necessarily need this high double equals digital value. So I'll just delete the high double equal sign. So if the digital value is high, the if statement is true, and then it runs the next statement in which it turns the LED low which turns off the LED. Let me add some spaces here. If the digital value is low, then it goes to the else statement and it switches the LED to high. Oh yeah, the LED needs to be corrected. So I'll just copy it from here and paste it here and here. Okay, let's save the sketch. And okay, let's see. And click verify to see if it works. Excellent. Let's go ahead and upload the sketch and see if it works. As you can see, if we tilt the switch, the LED turns off. And if we tilt the switch upright, it turns the LED on. It turns off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Excellent. Okay, for my next demonstration, let's make a magic eight ball. This one was inspired by the YouTube user Arduino. <laughs> Go figure. There wasn't any code or schematic available to download, so I'm going to try to recreate it. Let's take a look at the schematic I made. Here's the schematic. You're probably wondering why I started with the schematic rather than the breadboard wiring diagram like I've done in the previous lessons. If anyone has used the Fritz software, you generally start with the breadboard. But I find that looking at the schematic in this situation is easier to understand. For the Magic 8-Ball, we'll connect the LCD to the Arduino. LCD will be covered more in detail in Tutorial 22, but I thought it would be fun to include it here. As you see, we wire up the LCD to pins 12, 11, 10, 5, 4, 3, and 2. Power goes through the 10K potentiometer for the LCD contrast. Also, power and ground connect to the backlight. The tilt sensor is moved onto pin 6. Oh, and I use this schematic tags for 5 volts and ground to simplify the circuit. And here's the wiring diagram. I ran power and ground to the power and ground buses. I use little jumpers located underneath the LCD to connect to the power and ground buses. The POTS wiper is connected to pin V0. The POT connects on one side to the positive bus and the other side to pin VSS. Here I'm trying to convey that the tilt sensor is still connected to the female to male jumpers and a jumper on one side to pin 6 and the other to the ground bus. Okay, let's take a look at the code. Here's the magic eight ball sketch. I'm using the library liquidcrystal.h. Now this should be installed with the Arduino. Otherwise, it's available under the Elegoo tutorial files. If you first go to the sketch menu item, include library, you should be able to see if you have the liquid crystal installed already. If you need to add it, select the add zip library Go to where you saved your Elegoo files, under your language, under libraries, 
and you should see the liquid crystal.zip. Select it and click the open button. Or I'll provide a link down below where you can download it. I have it, so I'll hit cancel for now. Once you have it installed, I think you should be able to use it. The first line is the include liquidcrystal.h library. Then we instantiate the variable LCD as a liquid crystal object class and pass the appropriate pins. Here we go to pass RS, RW, enable data 4, data 5, data 6, and data 7 pins. Next we see the global constants. We set the variable for the tilt sensor to pin 6. And a couple of global variable boolean states, current and previous, and an integer reply that will hold a random number. Under the void setup, we have a LCD begin statement, which will define the number of characters and the number of rows in our LCD. We set up our tilt sensor pin as input, and we enable the pull-up resistors. And then we set up the LCD display with its initial message. Use the set cursor to move to the next line, and then print magic eight ball on the second line. The void loop starts with getting the current switch state using a debounce function that we created back in lesson five, which we pass the previous switch state. So if the current state does not equal the previous state, there is a change in the switch state. And it looks to see if that switch state is low. If it's low, then it means the switch is closed. We'll clear the display, get a random number, move the cursor to the first line, print the message, eight ball says, and move the cursor to the second line. Then we go to a switch statement. Now we haven't covered switch case statements yet, so I'll include a link below. But briefly, it jumps to the case that equals the reply value we passed to it. Now that number will be between zero through seven. Based on that value, it will jump to that case with that value through seven. And for each of these cases, we'll send a print to the LCD screen with a random selected reply. Else, it will assume that you have turned the tilt switch upside down and you're asking your eight ball question. It clears the screen, moves the cursor to the first line, and prints eight ball says, and moves the cursor to the second line. Sort of like the eight ball is waiting for you to finish asking your question and, and waiting for you to tilt it back up. Finally, we pass the current switch state to the previous switch state. Going on to the functions, we have just the one. Here is the debounce we had from lesson five. The only change we did is add the tilt sensor pin instead of the push button pin that we had before. And then I increased the delay time to 100 because it was just too sensitive. I had too many false positives or switches. Anyhow, let's upload the code and see if it works. Before we start, you can see we have a variable resistor here, my little jumpers, one that wasn't quite long enough, so I had to use a little jumper here to connect to VO pin. I tried to arrange the jumpers so that you can see the display easier. I'm also using the two bus bars as I showed in the wiring diagram. Okay, let's test it out. Will I win the lottery? No. Will folks like this sketch? Most likely. Will this work? Certainly. Will I win a million dollars? Certainly. Excellent. Is this the best video ever? Yes. Wow. We'll better end on that note. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the tilt ball switch and the magic eight ball circuit. If you like this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. 
I'll have additional links for other interesting videos and the code for this project in the show notes below. Join me next time for Lesson 9, Servo. If you like this video, don't forget to rate and subscribe. I'll try to put out a new video each week. Thanks and see you next time.